So, um, we usually do this by hand, yeah? That one just there? That was just adding up all of these blue values here. Yep, so there's my sum, there's the cells that describe it. Okay. All right, we've done most of the legwork now. This is the hard part, right? How do we go from variance to standard deviation? What do we do? John? Take the square root, right? So there's no square root button on our keyboard, again, so type in equals. To get a square root, you use the abbreviation that Excel has, which is S-Q-R-T, square root. Uh, open a bracket to indicate, okay, now I want you to calculate the square root of this number. And to get that cell, you just tap on it, yeah? After you open the bracket, just tap there, and it'll put in the right cell number for you, okay, like so. Then close your bracket. So. What's this mean? What have we just calculated? This is standard deviation. Okay. Now I'm going to teach you to do something which is anticipating something we're going to learn later on. How do you read this? Have a look at what I've written down here, which you probably have not written yet. I want you to read it with me. E of x is the expected value, or in this case it's also the same as the mean. right? Then I've got the mean plus a standard deviation, and the mean take away the standard deviation, right? So what I'm looking at is, what's the middle of my data, okay? Like, there's smack bang in the middle, which is expected value, and then like plus a bit, minus a bit. Here's how we're gonna do, do it, right? Equals, um, I wanna start with my expected value, which is this number up the top here. And then I want to, in the first instance, I wanna add my standard deviation. So I just click on the appropriate cells. I've got B3 plus C14, okay? If I hit enter, gives me this value. And then I want to do the same thing, but instead of adding, I want to subtract. So I just type equals again, start with the expected value, which is up the top here. And instead of adding my standard deviation, I'm going to subtract my standard deviation, which is still here. Okay, so I've got B3 minus C14. Okay. All right, now this is what I get. Did you get the same numbers? Do your numbers match? So what is this telling us, right? What did I tell you those nine numbers were at the beginning? What do they represent? They represent the variables, in this case, their heights, yeah? The heights of people, right? So what I've got here is the middle, smack bang in the middle of the heights is 1.65 meters, or 1.66, right, if I round it properly, okay? And this is telling us, one, a standard deviation above, a person who's above average height, and a person who's below average height, this range, from a meter 60 to a meter 70, you should find the vast majority of your people in that range. That's why we calculate a standard deviation. And sure enough, just have a look at the data, right? Um, I can see this one, this one, these, I'm just counting all the people in this range, right? This one, that one's too tall, 1.71 is, is way above that. 1.63 is okay. This one, 1.55, is that within my range? No, they're too short. Uh, 1.6 is just below, and 1.69, these are okay. So you can see I've got a lot that are just within that range, right? Um, these are called Z scores, by the way. We'll get to them a little bit later on. All right, are you happy? Does your spreadsheet look exactly the same as mine? Okay, right, here's my next step. I want you to take everything that you just calculated, just highlight the whole thing, copy it, and then I'd like you to paste it just beside. Okay, and we're gonna do some um, mucking about with these, right? Now you've got a duplicate of this data, and what I want you to do is, instead of calling this original data, delete where it says original, and what I want us to investigate is, well, what difference does it make if we change the scale of this data? Change of scale is what we're first looking at. So I'm going to write change of scale. For instance, you've got these heights measured in meters. What if I wanted to change this all to heights measured in centimeters? That's a change of the scale. All my numbers are going to be how much bigger? Times 100, right? So two decimal places are going to move. So here's what I'd like you to do. Watch carefully for this pit, right? Take all of the data which we entered before. Just delete all of it. Okay, just clear it. Okay, you're like, wait, why did, I, why did we bother copying all of that just to delete the data? The answer is, all of my formulas are all still there, still doing my work, okay? Just they've got no data to point out. And then here's what I want to do. How do I turn a height in meters to a height in centimeters? What do I do to it? Multiply by 100, so hit equals, right? I'm going to take this height and I'm going to multiply by 100, right? That's the asterisk, put in 100, and if I punch in enter, is 164 what I expected? Yep. There's me turning meters into centimeters, yeah? So I've multiplied by 100, and when I hit enter, I get 164, because that's the same height, but in centimeters, different units. So far, so good? 
All right, the beauty, of course, of doing this in Excel, once you've written a formula, it's good to go. So I'm just going to copy that formula, and I'm just going to do the rest of the rows. It's going to look over to the left of the spreadsheet, take all those original heights, and multiply by 100, which gives us this. OK, and the spreadsheet did all the work, right? We just needed to supply the data. Yeah, Tva? Which step did you want me to go back to? I just finished deleting all the cells. OK, you deleted all the cells, so it looks like this? Yeah. Yeah, OK. So what I wanted to do was take all my heights over here and multiply them by 100 to turn centimeters, sorry, to turn meters into centimeters, yeah? So that height multiplied by 100. Yep. Once I've done that, I'm like, I don't just want one height. I want all the heights. So I highlight all the way down, and then I've copied and pasted. OK? All right. So I'd like you to um, take these values here, and we're going to highlight them just a little bit. OK? Um, highlight these ones here, standard deviation, mean plus standard deviation, and mean take away standard deviation. Can you? Um, Color them in red for me. Sir, yeah. One uh, question. Yep. Oh, wait. Hold on. Yeah, you're talking about these guys? Yeah, so duplicates. So there's two people with the same height, which is fine. Which is fine. I guess I could also do this in a frequency table and say that twice, but I can just write the number twice. Okay. Have you highlighted those numbers in red for me? Yep. OK, now, this is really important. This is a major, major deal. And we're going to write some notes on this in a second. OK? I want you to look at the effect that the change on scale from meters to centimeters, what effect did it have on these three things down here? Compare those red numbers to what they used to be. OK? Have a look. To go from here all the way over to there, what's the difference? What do you see? Yeah, Aaron, go ahead. The decimal point just moves to the right. The decimal point's just moved. Quick question for you. How many places has it moved? Two places. In other words, it's 100 times bigger, right? Now, tell me why that should be exactly what we expect. Why are these numbers, like the standard deviation, why is the standard deviation 100 times bigger? The standard deviation, let me just repeat exactly what Sarang said because he, he nailed it, right? The standard deviation is proportional to the data that you put in. All of our data is 100 times bigger. Do you agree? So therefore, your standard deviation, also 100 times bigger. Um, your mean, also 100 times bigger. So if you take those and you add or you subtract, everything is 100 times bigger. Does that make sense? Okay. So your expected value and your standard deviation, they grow in proportion to whatever you scaled by. Now I want you to have a look at the variance. Can you highlight that in a new color for me? Let's make it blue, for example. Now, the variance has also gotten bigger. How much bigger is it? Is it 100 times bigger, like the mean and the standard deviation? Ah, how many spots has the decimal place moved? It's moved four times, right? Uh, there it is, here. And I've had to move it uh, once, twice, three times, four times. So how much bigger is it? Not 100 times bigger, it's? It's 10,000 times bigger. OK, 10,000 times bigger. Now think about this for a second. Why is it 10,000? How did we calculate? I'm just going to uh, highlight the formulas again. How did we calculate variance? We take the probability. Ah, you maybe you've seen it, right? You take the probability. And then you're like, what's your distance from the expected value, right? That's the distance there. But then what did you do to that distance? You, you squared it, right? So because everything's 100 times bigger, if you're squaring 100 times bigger, then your variance, everything is squared in the variance, yeah? It's not 100 times, it is 10,000. It's 100 times 100. Does that make sense? Okay. So this is important to jot down, right? Maybe you want to put this um, here, right? This is 100 times bigger. I'm going to make this font a bit smaller so I can fit it in there. Let me make that maybe like a 6 or 2. 100 times bigger, right? But this one here, this is not 100 times bigger. This is 100 squared times bigger. Okay, I actually think I have a character for this. I'm going to see if I can find it. Uh, there we go. Squared. Urgh.
All right, there we go. Okay, let me zoom right into that space just so you can see what I've got there. All right, here we go. So our standard deviation and our expected value, 100 times bigger, because you made your data 100 times bigger. And then your variance, not 100 times bigger. How much bigger is it? 100 squared, yeah? Now, quick question for you. Let's not do the calculations just yet. If you, think about this for a second with me, if you had some unit that was not 100 times bigger uh, than a meter, but like say double, right? What change would you expect from the standard deviation from this over to there if I was increasing the size of my data by 2? The standard deviation should also be increased by 2, right? What about the variance? It's going to be 4, isn't it? And I can, you don't have to do this on your spreadsheet, but I can do this quickly and verify this, right? Remember we said, whoops, let's delete all this. I'm going to zoom back out. There we go. Equals all my original data. Let's make it twice as big. Twice as big. So let's copy all that down. Have a look. Is my standard deviation double what it used to be? I went from 0.052 to 0.104. Is that double? It is. Have a look at my variance there. I had 0.0027. Is that four times bigger? 27 times 4 is 108. So you're pretty much there, right? And I could do this. I could keep on changing it. But the importance is the expected value and your, and your standard deviation, they change just like your data does. But variance, because it's all squared. Everything gets squared. So it gets bigger by the square. All right. 